You're saying every now and then it goes negative? So I might as well just do some checks. Oh, hello, chicken. There's a chicken in there. <laughs> That's a bunch of chicken eggs. Hey guys, got another trouble call for a submersible level transducer that stopped working. Customer states the level's all wonky. Wants us to come and look into it and figure it out. All right, see you there. All right, hey guys, here we are. We're on site. Um, kind of interesting. Maybe I'm at the wrong place. But uh, the transducer appears to be working. It says 2.69 feet on our display there. Sump pump's running in hand. Let me call my operator and see what's wrong. Maybe I'm at the wrong place. It's entirely possible. Hey, Colo. I'm good. Um, the Ikaika told me you got a transducer problem. At 5B? I'm here now. It says 2.69, 2.67. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, that's that's a good reading to me. You're saying every now and then it goes negative? Okay. Well, I'm here. I might as well just do some checks, make sure everything's good. Yep, no worries, Cola. Okay, bye. Alrighty, so they're saying... They're saying they came here a couple days ago or a day ago, and this was showing a negative number, which is obviously a failure. Um, the transducer could be going out intermittently, I suppose. But at this point, I'm here, so I might as well just do some checks, make sure all the connections are good and tight. Uh, you know, nothing loose from this thing shaking, messing it up, so... Okay, that's pretty easy. Let's just open it up and check all our connections. Here I was all ready for battle and show up and well, everything's all working. So the way we're doing this, uh, we bring it from the sump, which is right there, it's past my meter. We bring it through, might as well just follow it. Here's the transducer cable. It's coiled on the ground, comes into this box as a barrier. This is a remote site that runs on a generator. So we'll just, oh, hello chicken. There's a chicken in there. <laughs> Not only is there a chicken in there, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine eggs. <laughs> Hilarious. Oh, she's long gone. Poor mama. Look at that. That's a bunch of chicken eggs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine eggs. Hell, I should take those home. Eh, but considering the location, I, I think I'll pass. I'll probably just leave those here. We do have a lot of feral chickens here on the island. Oh yeah, there she is over there. It's okay, mama. You can come back. I'll be out of here soon. I'm glad I saw her first. I would have that would have scared the shit out of me. Okay, we're just doing simple little wire nuts. We can look at those. That looks alright. Yeah, that looks alright. No corrosion. Tight. Our shield is good. How's our breather tube? Breather tube looks good. Vacuum is good. Hey, guy, guy. I talked to Colo. Yeah, sorry, sorry for bother you. Yeah, we're all good. It, it's working now, but I'm just gonna check everything and make sure it's all good. Yeah. Take care. Thanks.
Yeah, so we got our breather tube here. This just keeps the cable at a, I guess like a negative pressure and a, a, some desiccant in here, in this tube here, to dry it out. Um, this is the old setup. They had an actual little vacuum bag, I guess you'd call that, bellows. Uh, but this new transducer here came with its own desiccant tube. So its dryer just goes straight into the desiccant tube and that any moisture that might make its way into the transducer cable gets wicked out. So that all looks good. Move on to the next thing. And if this was anywhere else, I'd probably take some of those eggs, at least half of them. But this is not a place to be eating food from, so I won't be doing that. This is a pretty industrial location, I would call it. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't eat anything to do with that chicken. Oh, nice, yeah, exactly. She's over there drinking from that runoff. It's amazing where animals will choose to live. Let's see her over there, mama hen. She does look healthy, though, at least from 100 feet away. Okay, so there's our transducer cable, goes into our intrinsically safe box, comes around here, uh, from him right here, it comes up, and then it lands here on this input, it goes through this, um, oh my gosh, what do they call these things? It's got a fuse on it, um, yeah, I think it's a intrinsically safe barrier. I guess is what it is just to prevent any amount of arcing. It's got a 50 milliamp fuses on it. Um, so from there, let's check all those connections. Almost dropped my, my drinker. Oh yeah, she's upset. So it comes in here. Let's check this. Still good. So then from here, it drops on this red shielded twisted pair. Our shields are good. And it runs down and back over to our radio control panel. So part of a, a network of sumps here at this facility, they take all the levels. Yep, everything's good in here. They bring it in on this shielded twisted pair. Let's just follow all his connections. Good, that's good, good, and good, and this is 8 and 10, there's 8 up here, so there's the fuse for him, that's good, so power going out, 10 is our analog input, here, I need an even tinier tweaker for that terminal. Get my itty bitty one. Okay, so 10 is the actual analog input. That is you. He's good. Then from here, so we take it into our computer and we send it out on a radio transmitter so that their central site can see what all the different sumps are at. Um, but then for here, for local control, we have an analog output, WY0, which is 13. Thirteen. And this negative here. So, or is that 31? That's 31. So let's check our analog output, because that's what's actually going over 
to our little display. This here is what's actually going over. Uh, so he's tight, 31, and then he comes down here, right there, and goes onto this straight black shielded twisted pair cable. And he goes there. What is this doing? Oh, that's just a DC negative bus. Okay, yeah, so that's just one solid bus of DC negative. Perfect. Uh, check our shields. Tight, good. Yeah, so everything on him is tight. Let's check all these DC negatives, because if one of them was loose, it may mess us up. It's kind of nice they're all on a bus and not daisy-chained from one to the next. But there we go, those are all good. Okay. Yeah, so then from here, this straight black shielded twisted cable goes back over to our local control panel. Here, and then comes up into this wireway, comes up here. What does he do? Does he splice in this wireway? I think he does. Let's see. He does splice in this wireway. Let's check that connection. That looks okay. But yeah, see if you open that up, there's your negative number right there. So if one of these connections was bad, that would cause what they're seeing. So let's just make sure that's good and tight. Yeah, that's good. And then from here, he's also spliced up at this guy. Let's make sure he looks good. Yeah, he's all right. And then the last step, let's put this cover back on. And then the last step is this guy, 27 and 28, into our little display controller. This thing will take an analog input, it'll have a little display that shows the analog input, and then it has relay outputs that you can program on the screen. What is this by? EPG companies. Pretty good. Pretty good little model. Does its job. And those are good too. Do we have a shield there? Yeah, we did. Let's just tighten that shield up. Very good. Okay. That's all the connections. If it keeps happening, I, I don't know. I'd say maybe check this module for failure, I suppose. I have had to replace them in the past. I got some spares in here. It was an intermittent when that failed before, so yeah. Not sure. All right, see you on the next one.